Trump is back. He's popping off. We're going to get to how back he is. But before we get to how back he is, let's talk about someone else. Little Ronda. What the fuck? What just happened? Dude, I fucking hate how absolutely unimaginably stupid this fucking website is, dude. I click on a video and it takes me to a communities tab. It happens like regularly nowadays. Like it happens on my mobile app too sometimes where I just like click on a video to watch it and it literally will like take me to a different post. Today, your poll numbers behind President Trump have been pretty substantially behind. And you Not have here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. Fucking terrifying. Not here. <laughs> Oh, and then the quick switch up, dude. He is such a fucking creature, dude. He is such a cretin. I am, I'm like disgusted by him, but also at the same time, I'm like scared, but not necessarily because like, I think he's going to win or anything like that, but more so I'm just like scared that aliens might be real. The UAP shit might actually be genuinely real. This is the most alien like way to exist, dude. Every single moment he is in public reacting to stimuli. It feels like I'm watching a fucking alien. More alien-like than Mark Dick Zuckerberg. You know what I mean? It's so odd. <laughs> look at his face. Look at his face. Look at the switch up. He's looking at the camera like... Oh, fuck. Did they catch me? Did you like that? That was a funny laugh, right? That's like how humans laugh. Bro should never smile. He should never laugh. I think that it's also that he's so painfully normal that he doesn't know how to be a person in public law. I just don't know. I've never seen... Like, Ted Cruz had more charisma than this, and he is the least... He is the most rizzless motherfucker out there. Today, your poll numbers behind President Trump have been... Dude, look at that. Look. Like, he, the coverage on this. Like, how much... How much spittle did you have, my man? How much spit was going around in your mouth in the vicinity? How much? Every part of this is so disgusting. I like that Trump doesn't even need to do anything. It's just like we're doing it for him. You know what I mean? Ron DeSantis is doing it for him. DeSantis took a fit pic with Larry Elder. DeSantis posed for a photo with fellow Republican challenger Larry Elder, who is also polling at 0%. <laughs> That's so wild when you're polling at fucking 0% that you're just like, oh, I'm just here to have fun with the rest of the candidates. Like, I love that. It's so terrifying. We're going to talk about little Rhonda firing his campaign manager as well. Uh, but before we do that, here's a quick, uh, here's a quick, Twitter moment. Um, thank God, guys. And Wokeness says, when I originally paid $8 for Twitter Blue, it was a gesture to support free speech with additional perks, which, of course, is not free speech. It's paid speech. It's quite literally paid speech. Free speech is not supposed to be paid speech. Oh, my God. Anyway. Little did I know that it would result in $14,000 of X payouts in a span of two months. $8 well spent. Thanks, Elon Musk. <laughs> this pose Adolf Hitler oh my god speaking of Twitter getting fucking ruined you will now have to click a view post engagements button to see quotes reposts and likes of a post the three will be separated in different tabs what oh so they're really just destroying everything that was good and unique about Twitter aren't they what is he doing I don't get it I don't understand like this goes beyond, okay? This goes absolutely beyond what you would expect. Uh, like, unless he is... Unless he is deliberately trying to, like, take a gun and shoot Twitter in the fucking head, I don't understand what he's doing. Is he, like, purposely trying to destroy his own product that he bought? Like, there is no fucking way that someone could be this short-sighted where he's just basically behaving like an animal. He's just reacting to stimuli. He's just, he's just going, oh yeah, 
I want to make sure that the blue check marks that pay me eight dollars. Okay, I want to make sure that the blue check marks that are paying me eight fucking dollars are 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 you know their feelings are spared whenever they get ratioed into oblivion. It makes no sense. Even True and Honest dunking on XUC. Wait, what? The bobbing tilted head, the title of the pause video, the absurd amounts of food wasted piled next to his computer the om- in the almost empty, barely decorated room, the maid's expression, the silence while writing in the note. Who on earth would want this life? Dude, this is... Why is True Anon getting involved in this? That's weird. This video is rough. I don't. I haven't seen it. I know that it's like going viral on Twitter. I, I don't, I couldn't get myself to see, like, I couldn't get myself to watch. Like. I'm sure he pays them a fuck ton. Like, it, it, let's be real. Like, if you were to ask them, they're probably very, like, they probably think he's gross, but, I mean, this isn't, this is not a, this is not a defense uh, of XZ at all, but he pays minimum wage, no shot. No, you guys are fucking ridiculous. Are you really sure? No. If there's one thing, okay, I think a lot of people fail to remember something. Twitch streaming, very profitable. Very low cost. If Twitch streamers are, uh, if Twitch streamers do one thing well, at least in my experience from all the people that I've met, all the people that I have met, um, usually they, they, you know, they drop a fuck ton of money. Rich people are known to be really cheap. Yeah, but you're right about that. You're absolutely right about that. However, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know about XG situation. This is like unimaginably bad. It's just like, dude, every day, every day, when I eat at my desk, okay, at the end of the day, I'm so fucking methodical with this. I, that's why I lose my goddamn mind when Austin just throws trash everywhere. Every single day, when I'm done with my stream, I sit there for a brief moment, I take a breather, and then I have already a bag that uh, if I've delivered food, if I've gotten food delivery, I have a bag, right? I will take that bag. I will take everything that is in my trash can, which there's nothing right now because I just started the day and the trash can is empty. You want to know why? Because I fucking dump everything at the end of the day in that trash can, which accumulates a lot of trash throughout the day because I'm sitting right here. Um... And I put it into that other bag, and then I take it and put it in my fucking trash can, my actual trash can. Okay? Do you not line it with the bag? No, not really. I don't understand. Like, I've seen all of those, uh, like, this is how you live, uh, Twitch streamer react shit. And I do not understand how they do that. I don't get it. You don't recycle? No, I do. I do not, I cannot comprehend how. You, you just don't do that. I don't get it. I mean, I think this is just an autistic thing. I do the same thing with my maids. It's not to be mean, but it's just so awkward that I'm scared to speak. I mean, listen, I have had cleaning done after events and whatnot. Yes, it is awkward. It's awkward even if you are uh, spending a shit ton of money. It's still awkward because you're like, well, this is something that like someone is doing. Also, this guy said my maids multiple. Holy fuck. Um, it's awkward. I think, no matter what happens. But regardless, like, you know, you got to you gotta help it out a little bit, you know? I, I don't know. You, you got to, like, pick up uh, after yourself a little bit. It's, like, pretty basic. Having said that, though, I think, um, you know, we don't do this. What is this? Ooh. Looks... Ah! Not on my keyboard! Yeah, Twitch streamer is very, very... Gnarly. Was going to be an annoying lib and say something about recycling for a meme, but someone just did it seriously? No, but I do recycle. Even though it goes usually to the same fucking landfill, let's be real, I still do it. I don't know. It makes me feel better at least a, a little bit. And it's also not hard to do. 
Um, so that's what it is. Because normally I'm not like embarrassed, chat. So like I'm more social and chill. But this time there's a lot of fucking trash. Holy fuck! I'm like actually shy. Sorry, bro. Bro, they've been cleaning for years. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> and then you see her face. And then you see her read what she wrote. Art while carrying a knife. Drop the knife now. Drop it. Body cam video. I should have done the worm to break the ice. Dude, it is like. The funny thing is on Twitch, like you have moments like this all the time from many different content creators, right? Like it's just that right now he's just getting fucking flamed. So there's more attention to the bad behavior that he does on a regular basis. <laughs> but it's pretty funny. Oh, God, it, it, it is definitely a very awkward moment. Ethan is out of his mind thinking X doesn't make good content. I mean, yeah, that's like, that's per that's a perfect example. <laughs> the worm is also a perfect example, but that one is a pretty good example. So many of my normie friends have seen this clip and are now over of XQZ is a rough week for him. I just, I don't know. I, I don't get it. Like, listen, it's a lot of people in this space. A lot of people in this space have uh, cleaning people. Okay. On. I don't know. Felix. A lot of people in this space of cleaning people, like, it's understandable, okay? I get it. I have recommended that people get uh, cleaning people, as I literally talked about on the fucking, uh, <laughs> on, the, on the goddamn podcast, on the latest episode of Fear and I was talking to Leslie. I think it was in the paywall proportion, but, like, Will and I have been to the roomie's house multiple times, and we... I straight up said, you guys need, like, you guys need cleaning people to come in every day, okay? You have too much trash. You have too much trash piling up all the time. Um, yo, Felix should stay at your house? He has stayed at my house. Exactly. That seemed like just a regular DJ clip. Why are people going viral? My friend, it's because your brain is so broken from being on Twitch all the time that you think that that's normal. That's not normal. To the normal person, when you show that, they lose their fucking mind. They go, what the hell is going on? That's insane. That's why every single time I have, like, a regular person here, like a real normie, a civilian, that sits right here next to me, their first response is shock. Sometimes horror, where they immediately go, how do you do this? What is going on? There's so much happening. It's very concerning to me that people need a main to clean up after them. Like that part, that part I understand. It's just the, like the, the thing that I don't understand is how you uh, don't clean up in your immediate vicinity. Like I, like even that, it's just like pretty basic. Cleaning is also a very um, therapeutic experience for the most part. Like laundry, therapeutic ass experience. It's like a lot of stuff that, um, I mean, I have like also very uh, A-worded tendencies, like I'll admit, especially when it comes to rigidity and, and uh, my, my structure and the way that I like certain things. And I will get like very anal, like when my dad and mom are staying at my place um, for extended periods of time, I just, I... Like, I feel like if my dad is cooking something, he's very messy and he gets stuff in his hands and then he'll touch a cabinet with stuff on his hands and then he'll leave the residue on the cabinet handle. And I, if I touch it, I feel like it's zapping my brain. If I accidentally open the fridge and I touch like gunk that is crusted out on the cabinet, it literally fires into my spine. Like I just go, like, I, I, I don't know how to describe it to you the moment and I know I'm weird for that 
it's gross, but it's probably like a manageable situation. For me, it literally feels like I just got zapped from the top of my fucking dome all the way to my ass cheeks. My entire spine lit on fire the moment I touched that shit. And I'm like, ah! Ugh! Okay, anyway. So, you know, I just want to clean up after myself all the time and I don't get it. No, nah, that's real. It's like how you can't chew gum in the bathroom because poop particles will get in it. <laughs> So, other things that other things that I do, for example, other things that I do, for those of you who do not know, um, like I, uh, you know, I have uh, I have this weird thing where I will reuse plates. Like, I have one plate. Like, I have a shit ton for guests and stuff when I have party or. You know, when I have people over or whatever, I have like enough uh, placemats and and because uh, my mom, you know, she got enough for a, a, a whole party, a whole uh, hosting situation. But one thing I do, and I know is weird as fuck. One thing I always do is I don't like having to clean a lot of of uh, plates, and I I don't even think that it's that big of a nuisance to clean plates. Like, I know. You just, like, fucking put it in the dishwasher, right? You rinse it off, and then you fucking put it in the dishwasher, and the dishwasher cleans it for you. It's not that big of a deal. But I just have something very weird about, like, constantly having to, uh, you know, put shit in a dishwasher that, um, that I will just, like, reuse the same plate, unless it's, like, really dirty or something. You know what I mean? Unless it has, like, residue on it. So... For the past week, for example, I've been using the exact, like, well, it's only been three nights in a row, but three nights in a row, I've used the same dish that I put the waffles on top of after, but it's, but it's, it's just like, it's just two waffles. It's two waffles. You fucking rinse it off after the end of the uh, end of the consumption, and then you can use it again. I just put two fucking waffles on it, and I use it for like, you know, 15 minutes at a time. What do you mean? I feel like I didn't get enough utility out of that plate. It's not dirty. With syrup? No, just waffles and ice cream. Unless the ice cream actually gets on the plate, in which case you have to rinse it off. But if you don't, and there's nothing on it, there's no residue on it, there's no ice cream on the fucking plate, the plate is fucking dry, why would you not reuse that? That makes no sense. I think you guys are crazy for this. No, there's no syrup or no whipped cream. I thought you were saying you didn't rinse it off at all. No, I rinse it off only if it has like, if it gets, if ice cream gets on the plate. But if there's no ice cream on the plate and it's just like some fucking waffle crumbs left on it, you just, you know, you, you push off the, the waffle crumbs into the sink and then you're good. Put the waffles in the toaster, take the waffles out of the toaster and put it on the fucking plate and just... I use it as a carrier, basically. I don't even, like, eat out of it. I think you guys are crazy if you think that I'm wrong for this. I mean, I know it's a little weird, but I don't think it's that weird. Uh, yeah, it's plate maxing, okay? Bro, if it's fresh after eating, rinsing it with some hot water and wiping it with a towel is good enough, thank you. The only time I reuse them is if, like, it has a basic sandwich and just breadcrumbs. It's just like brush them off and it's good. If you were born in the 1900s, you definitely not believes in, believe in germs 100%. Yes, um, I agree with you. I probably, I probably not, I probably would not believe in germs. I don't, I don't disagree with that. Um, yeah. Plate maxing, fork maxing, spoon maxing. What am I going to do? I barely used it. You don't think I should use it again? That's crazy. Or throw a little bit of dishwasher fluid on it. If it's a dishwasher soap on it, rinse it, use it again. Why the fuck do I have to, why, why, why do I have to like put it in the, in the sink and, or, or put it in and, and wash it and whatever. You know what I mean? It's just one plate is fine. I, that's all I need. 
That's actually lazy as fuck. I agree. Well, you say lazy. I say efficient. That's all I mean. Uh, yo, I do the same exact thing, but I found it helpful just to not mention it, Lamau. Okay, well, whatever. I mentioned it. Big mistake, I guess. There's a, there's a bunch of real freaks in here uh, getting mad at me over this. the fuck's this guy talking about like washing a plate without a dishwasher like a normal wash yeah dish soap you put dish soap on it you put a little dish soap on it and and rinse it off with water if you've used it and then you know you let it dry out and then you can use it again the next day why not if it's, if it's gotten even dirty, yeah, you just clean the plate. I clean it manually instead of cleaning it like with the dishwasher, uh, with the, with the, instead of putting it in the dishwasher, instead of putting it in the dishwasher, I just clean it manually. And it's like, I don't know why it's, it's simpler for me because I feel like the dishwasher process is a whole ordeal. What do I mean by this? You let it sit there for a while, like until it's full, right? Because you can't, you can't run it unless it's like full, or at least I don't run it un until it's full, okay? So you just, they're just sitting there for like, you know, a couple days. Uh, I've scrubbed it and I put it in there and it's just sitting there for a couple days and then it gets full and then you have to take it out and put it in the right fucking cabinets and all this shit. Like that's too much work. It is infinitely more efficient to take one plate that you're using, okay, one plate for desserts and one plate for, like, regular uh, regular meals, and then, you know what I mean? And then just fucking wash it with, just hand wash it, and then just reuse it. Yes, it's normal dishwashing, but you were describing it completely differently originally. No, I'm this is when I this is when it's actually dirty. This is when a plate is like actually dirty. That's the difference. I'm talking about like if I eat from a plate, okay? If I'm eating from a plate, if I'm eating from an actual plate and there's like, you know, re food residue left on it, then I wash it, of course. I hand wash it instead of putting it in the dishwasher, and then I just eat from the same plate over and over again. I would much rather clean one plate manually than like do the stacking process and then fucking unwinding and, you know, putting it uh, all back together. Are people not understanding that the plate is being reused right away? Or, 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 for the record, like I said, if there's no food residue on it, then yeah, I just fucking brush off the crumbs and then I reuse it like until there's food residue on it. And then when there's food residue on it, you just, you know, you just uh, wash it manually with your hands with dishwashing soap. Bro, you just spent 39 minutes talking about fucking dirty plates. Yeah, whatever, dude. Uh, it seems to me like it's something that we need to be discussing, okay? Calm down. Hassan, there's food residue on it. You can't see bacteria. Mold grows on dry food, too. Okay, first of all, how the fuck would it grow in, like, three days? Not like I'm using it for a week. You'd give your guest a plate like that? Absolutely not. No, I, I would not do that. No, I wouldn't give it to a guest. I'm talking about my own plate. Also, you have to remember, I'm just literally fucking... This is just like my... Uh, me on my lonesome experience, okay? Stop fighting with germaphobes. Germ perverts are absolutely coping. Reusing plates is normal. Yeah, we're fucking germ maxing. Guess what, germ perverts? You want to know something crazy? We're going to outlive you, okay? You want to know Why? Because a little bit of germs is good, okay? We're not living in this fucking, oh, man, I'm so scared of germs lifestyle, okay? We're, we're getting a little bit of germs in our body. It's good for the soul. It's good for the mind. It's called natural immunity, okay? Got to have a little bit of, got to have a little bit of germs in you. Didn't your ass get COVID multiple times? No, it didn't, actually. My ass only got COVID one time. That's it. What do you what do you mean uh, multiple times? I've also I'm also fucking vax, vaxxed at the wazoo. So you're wrong on that too. 
One COVID, one immune. <laughs> what about cups? I'll be honest. Dishwashers are sized for a family of four. If you're a solo or a working couple, the dishwasher ends up smelling because it takes so long to fill it up. Yeah. To be fair, you get sick like once a month, bro. No, I don't. I don't get sick once a month. I will injure myself working out. But even that, you know, hasn't been that bad. I do think that, like, you don't need a dishwasher. And I get why people don't. Uh, I get why there's places where they, they, where they don't have dishwashers. Like, what are you, running a kitchen, dude? What the fuck? Why do you need a dishwasher? I guess they're good for families, you know? You need to use soap and hot water. You can't just rinse it. This is the reason you shit all the time, chatters. Back to your grows insanely fast at room temp hours, not days. Okay, to be fair, I'm also like, you have to remember something. I'm also a machine, okay? I poop at the same exact time every day. That's why I never have to poop on stream, and my poops are perfect. Perfect poops. Not too soft, not too solid. Comes out immediately. They're, they're fucking, I, I'm using maximum efficiency, Okay. The best part of American consumption, dishwa dishwashers, AC, vented, clothes, dryers, perfect poopers in. Uh, okay, uh, worst part about American consumption, no bidets. It's fucking gross and weird that, like, Americans that have figured out laziness in every capacity of their lives have not been living on the, the uh, you know, haven't figured out the bidet lifestyle. Very stupid. Anyway, um... As far as, uh, as far as everything else goes, before I move on to the Ron DeSantis thing, um, I know a lot of you were like, oh, did you see XUC's uh, uh, DMs with Ethan? Yes, I did. Uh, absolutely nutty mode. I don't know. Uh, I mean, I do know why it's happening to XUC in the way because he's like isolated himself from a, a lot of people. Um, I hope he has people, uh, in his, uh, in his life that will, you know, lead him on the right path. Part of a kick contract to go nutty. Now I think part of the kick contract is to fucking shit on Hassan, but I don't think it's, it, it caused him to go nutty, but he's going nutty with it. He's going nutty mode. He's going nutty, buddy. Um, I mean, he is in the the Hasanabi hole right now. Twitter has realized that he is a, a content mine that is freshly tapped. Everything he does is going to be under a microscope going forward. I don't even know if he recognizes that in all of his career. He's never had this kind of uh, situation. The situation that I've lived in pretty much for the past four years, I would say. I've never seen somebody else get his ass eat this hard that wasn't me on the fucking timeline or shit that they've been, uh, shit that they've been doing that maybe even other people would consider normal. Some of the things. Um, and the problem is, yes, but you've learned how to thrive in this hole. No, it still fucking sucks. It absolutely sucks. Dude, none, no human being Regardless of like uh, their their weird mannerisms and all the weird dumb shit that they do, no human being could live uh, under that level of scrutiny. Especially because like yeah, for the per for the since I bought the house, every August I've gotten absolutely destroyed. Okay, every August I get canceled. Whether it's the cracker thing, whether it's like buying a house, whether it's like Twitch contracts leaking, you know what I mean? All this shit and. The unfortunate, the unfortunate reality is that um, even if you even if you figure out how to exist in that space, leftists naturally find it hard to feel sorry for omega rich multimillionaires. Yeah, I don't really care about that stuff. It's I've been canceled for shit that like every content creator does uh, as a given that. No one would ever consider to be ridiculous or wrong buying a house for yourself and your family, buying a nice car. 
and then making fun of yourself for your midlife crisis. Things of that nature. Um, but that has created a space for me that I have to exist in where I have to make sure that I have to make sure that like everything I'm doing is like copacetic up the code and, uh, not super offensive. Other creators openly say, saying they move to Texas for tax purposes, but don't get any hate Lamau. Yeah, I know. Um, because there's different standards for it, right? There's different standards. Those guys, they're, they're not socialists. They don't have to be socialist Jesus. And a lot of people, XQC included, have ridden that wave, have rode that wave. When everybody was doing that to me, there were a lot of motherfuckers out there, XQC being one of the main people, absolutely riding that wave, like hamming up the fucking narratives Hamming up and, and beefing up every single time I got fucking quote-unquote canceled or whatever. Playing into it. Always. Okay? Always. And now he's like in the crosshairs in a similar, in a, in a similar situation. And I hope and I know what the, what the mental space for that looks like. It's not great. Um, I'm very lucky that I have... Uh, a a decent mechanism for grounding myself in reality. I have a lot of friends and a lot of family members that I am, you know, seeing every day. And, uh, you know, he needs a similar support structure for himself and not just fucking yes men. Stop affording him charitability when you know for a fact he would never do the same for you. Bitch, I don't give a shit. I, I, first of all, I don't care. I don't. I don't care. He he will probably look to me covering this and already get mad and be upset and say, like, fuck him. How dare he cover this? When that, that motherfucker has done this nonstop to me over and over again in way worse ways. Okay? Yes. He his In his situation, it is self-inflicted. 100%. Okay? But I don't give a shit. Like, I'm not here to... <sighs> I'm not here to 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 fucking play out uh, and and be malicious and be vindictive. Okay, you can be critical of someone and still practice a little bit of empathy. I hope that ultimately this will be this will be a moment where I hope that this will be a moment for him to to recognize that like. He has played the role of trying to lol cow people, whether he inadvertently recognized it or not. And now that he is a content mine that is fresh for the tapping and the crosshairs are on him in a similar capacity, maybe he will recognize and, and change his behavior a little bit. Or, I assume... That uh, he will just keep going down and, and seeking out yes men and sycophants and triple down and quadruple down and like hype up members in his community that give him what he needs. You know, the same thing that people accuse me of doing all the time because I ban people so quickly. Like motherfuckers will come in here and be like, uh, and, and try to uh, relitigate the same exact bullshit that has been relitigated a thousand times over when we're doing like news coverage and then they get clapped for like a week and they make it seem as though this is an echo chamber. There's an echo chamber. It's like, yeah, no, there is a, there is an echo in here for sure. But yeah, it's not good. Where's the dog pen, by the way, the dog pen's gone, brother. Um, she's perfectly fine without the pen. Now I just moved the gate, uh, to the wall. What do you make of him adopting all these right-wing talking points, calling people paid actors, high roofing? You mean high roading? He doesn't know what he's saying. He just wants to use words that he thinks uh, will, will help him win arguments. He does it all the time. <laughs> My man's a high roofing. He does it all the time. He does the, the whole, like, goalpost shifting. Uh, Andy. I'm the referee, Andy. All this stuff. Um, because he, he watches, uh, you know, debate content. He watches people debate and
and he wants to basically repeat what he's heard there. Disingenuous. You know? Bad faith argumenting. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's content though. At the end of the day, the worm was content. Um, the, the debate conversation, the point of contention in this debate that Ethan and XUZ had. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can watch my latest video on it. We uploaded my reaction to it. I was reacting to it live, um, was, was one that is very, That debate was was not exactly on really just like really important issues, right? It was just like, are you reacting hard enough? Are you not reacting hard enough? Whatever the fuck, right? It wasn't that serious of a of a situation, especially because there's a lot of nuance, and on top of that, there's a lot of people who don't consider it to be bad. Okay, and ultimately, that was for content. And it was great. It was great content overall. X did the worm. Ethan did his classic slow cook. Um, there were some really funny moments about it. But then I guess it fucking fell apart a little bit because they kept DMing one another late into the night, which is never a good idea. Um, Ethan started off. What is it? He... he by the way, Vince Vintage is the GOAT. I, I love him, uh, for the record. Holy shit. I mean, I love his videos. I watched some of his videos on stream before, but, like, I never would have expected him to turn around and do this. Well, because one is a which is pretty funny because it happened right after XQC pulled the, the Hassan bad cord, which is, like, a classic thing that people do in, in, in arguments is to be like, hey, Ethan, you know your co-host Hassan? Bad. Like, a classic. A classic distraction. So for it to come for for uh, Ethan's counter to that to be, hey, look, I went and I've reached out to a content creator who you reacted to, and this is what he had to say. Uh, this is what he had to say. It fucking was awesome. Who this Vince Vintage? My friend, you've got a new fan, okay? I don't know who this Vince Vintage. I love seeing big streamers XCS on Miss Give Moist Critical react to my videos on stream. Clouding me out for watching my video equals fair exchange. But when a streamer has nothing to say and then re-uploads the reaction on their YouTube channel, that's the problem. Yeah, this is, he He already, yeah, this is from, look, this is all the way from September 21st, 2022, like when I fucking watched it. I responded to it. I said that video was fire. But yeah. I swear to God. I so just you to ask, are you a victim, by the way? Let me, hold on, this is important. This is, this is important for you to this understand. This was the cook. This was so the, the epic Vince, uh, cooking. And I said, right. hey, I'm just curious, did XUC get permission? And I'm going to read you the message he sent me, if that's okay. Go ahead. He said, really appreciate you reaching out, Ethan. I've never been contacted by XQC at all for any of my Iraq videos. My personal take is this. I love big streamers watching, like XQC, Hassan, Mizkif, Moist Critical, watching my videos on their stream. It's a big ego bo boost, but... When XQC does it, it's different. When he watches my video, he always re-uploads the whole thing on his YouTube channel with his insightful commentary as, wow, chat, isn't this crazy? Compared to when Hassan watched my stuff, he shouted me out and he says he loves my stuff and he sent a bunch of subscribers to my channel. A fair exchange. Here's a video. He showed me a video of, of Hassan doing that. And then he said, XQC, he really just steals my shit. Entertains his audience of hundreds of hours I put into oh! his videos while I get just a link in the YouTube. I swear to God. That coming right like 30 seconds after XG tried to pull that fast one, the classic like Hassan Bad, that was, I never get that. I never get that, dude. I never take accident. Dude, I only catch stray L's. People still say you are the chair streamer even after this clip. Yeah, I don't give a fuck. Those people never watch. It doesn't matter. They never watch. They only watch someone else basically clip uh, in a malicious way for the most part in an identical capacity to XQC trying to do that to Ethan. A fucking random moment, like a sequence of time where like I either had an emergency or some shit like that, which happens, you know what I mean? I can't tell you every single thing that's going on behind the camera, but there are some certain moments where I cannot be on camera, okay? It happens. Uh, I usually tell you what I'm doing if I, like, walk away for uh, a minute and 21 seconds maximum. 
But um, ultimately, ultimately, uh, the people that are constantly saying like, oh, Hassan is a fucking uh, re a chair reactor. He's a chair reactor. He's a chair reactor. Those people don't watch. They've watched a content creator make a YouTube video about how I'm a chair reactor because if you come in here and see for yourself, you will recognize that that is not the case. So it's just, it is whatever. Um, it is what it is. I, I can't do anything about it. I, I, I can't. Uh, my hope always is that hopefully someone, hopefully someone uh, that does get uh, brainwashed by those ridiculous memes or whatever who believes in it in their heart of hearts is coming in here is coming in here at least with like a crumb of charitability and they will recognize that that is not the case. That's it. Um, but I, d I think people don't know we had that psycho chatter that used to time your peas and they have that spreadsheet. I mean, I have psycho chatters who po time my peas still to this day. I don't think they have a spreadsheet anymore, but they still do it. So it, it doesn't matter. My point is it doesn't matter. But a lot of those memes have permanence, okay? A lot of those memes become reality. And what ends up happening in that situation is uh, people, if they, if they see you as like someone who's constantly getting in hot water by freaks, it doesn't matter if the people that are yelling at you are like literally mentally ill. Um, they just see the toxicity. There's an air of toxicity around you. And that's not really good for uh, any kind of content creation where you don't want that toxicity to seep out to others that are in your orbit. Uh, that's why I always am very careful with who I have uh, on my stream, things of that nature. And, and uh, what I was trying to say is the reason why this was so, uh, like such a wonderful change of pace for me is that Clearly, I have a lot of friends in YouTube, right? I have a lot of friends who make YouTube content and you know, I talk to them all the time. I make YouTube content as well. I, I want to make sure that this is as not shitty for other content creators as possible. Okay? I don't want to harm other people. And harm might happen unintentionally in this structure that we have. So, basically, um, harm might happen unintentionally in the structure that we currently have, the currently uh, in the way that we make content, especially on Twitch, that, um, you know, I, I, I try to minimize that as best as possible, but people still never really, people don't usually uh come out and and say like no Hassan is good like Hassan is good actually you know what I mean they don't they don't say that because they know that if they say that in a lot of instances the toxicity will go for after them it's a risk to put yourself out there it shouldn't be that way but it is yeah then they use that toxicity to isolate you yeah it's a deliberate attempt it's a deliberate attempt to do that, um, to, to create an island uh, for, uh, for someone like myself. Are you going to cry? Yeah, dude, I, I'm going to cry. Out of, tears of joy, really. So that's why I usually catch uh, stray elves. Um, but this was a situation. This was a situation where it was a stray W, which I, I loved. Haas, this should be such an easy layup for you. It's a labor issue, a big streamer, rich off the back of small content creator, but you are being so goddamn obtuse. Oh, I think a lot of people uh, that are watching the YouTube content don't necessarily understand how YouTube content works, which is why there is a more nuanced conversation to have in this situation. That's the problem. Because when you're a YouTuber, your entire job your goal is to get maximum amounts of fucking eyeballs on your content because youtubers make money off of those eyeballs if those eyeballs are being displaced as is the case that some youtubers do okay as is the case that some youtubers make then that's not good but if the eyeballs are being displaced minorly on twitch but then 
pays back in dividends for the content creator that you're watching, okay, for the content creator that you are watching on your Twitch stream, then yes, of course, uh, that's a good exchange. That is a good thing for YouTubers. We watched this. We watched so many YouTube videos about Ludwig creating a YouTube channel out of nothing and then actually making a video that got thousands of views simply by getting a Twitch streamer like Misgif to react to it. It is absolutely a successful method. There are hundreds of content creators at this point that my community has been, uh, my community has become longtime fans of, content creators that I also have on my stream whose YouTube videos I watch on a daily basis that are, are great. They don't have an issue with it. So it's weird that to have such a cut and dry black and white approach to the subject, but there are best practices that everyone should adopt. You know, it's not up to who is stolen from to address this. Big streamers like UNXT have a responsibility more responsible. Come on, brother. Okay, um, this is... I've addressed this so many times, Chatter. Um, I think you can watch my other videos on this. I think there's like multiple videos on this um, that I've covered on my YouTube page. You can go and check that out. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm not going to, I'm not going to rehash this issue more and more. People see exposure and assume it's bad in the same way as it is when people are paid for art and exposure, but it's a different ball game. Exactly. Like this person is not coming in here to, have a well thought out discussion they're just in here to duke it out they want to argue they want to debate it's derailing the content which is why i'm going to give you a day off okay and we're going to move on because i'm not the one being obtuse you are the one being obtuse um ironically <laughs> People will stop dragging you into this if you just pause the video when you walk away or go pee, simple man. I don't know why you won't do this. I'm going to give you a day off as well. I saw you earlier that you were uh, trying to get my attention. The reason why I'm giving you a day off is because that is not true. The reason, if that was the case, then people wouldn't say I'm a chair streamer or a react streamer. You're not right. It does not matter. A lot, the overwhelming majority of those people are never going to watch me. I literally, it, it doesn't matter. They're never going to watch. They already do that. The, I already have uh, changed the, the way that I do it. Okay? The way that I make content. They don't actually care. So why are you behaving like a fool? Why are you getting fooled by these people who don't actually care? This is a damn near identical structure to when someone whose name is like groiped up Himmler's dick 1488 will make a tweet about how racist I am or something. And then you come in here and you go, I'm really concerned. A lot of people have legitimate concern about your racism, Hassan. Look at this guy. Himmler's titty 1488 says that you're actually, you know, anti-white racist. Why do you continue doing anti-white racism? If I were to, if I were to consistently try and address that, I would not be able to make any content whatsoever. So please exercise a little bit of critical thinking, okay? And make up your own mind and understand, make up your own mind and understand that those people are gearing you in a way so you come in here and say this so then I, you know, give you some time off so that one, you develop a little bit of resentment towards me and two, then they can clip it and post it on Twitter and be like, look how fucking much of an echo chamber Hassan is creating. Bro, been seeing gimmick accounts on Twitter shitting on you just to farm impressions? Yeah. Those guys do not have any personal politics. Their only ideology is to generate more clout for themselves and then hopefully try to move that clout away to something else. So, of course, when they see something that is easy to mine for content and likes and engagements, they go after it. XQC is that person in this very moment. He's in the crosshairs. 
If you just invite the content creator on your stream, shout them out, let them stay at your place, eat your food for a month, and they'd stop. Oh, wait, you already did that, and these assholes still won't drop the chair streamer bullshit. Exactly. <laughs> so, the people who literally cloud farm on you admit in the replies they're making shit up or don't watch Twitch even? Yeah. You always ban and time out people when you don't agree with them or they say something that is against your opinion and might be right. Um, no. It's because they are derailing and it's very selfish for all of the other people that are in here. Let's continue. I'm not banning that person, but let's continue. Let's get to little Rhonda. Rhonda Santis, ladies and gentlemen, has now fired his campaign manager. What is going on? What is going on in the Ron DeSantis camp? Reporting of another shakeup in Florida Governor Ron DeSantis's presidential campaign. Just this morning, NBC News learned the Florida governor has replaced his campaign manager in what marks another major change within the DeSantis camp. I want to bring back Vaughn Hilliard, live from New Hampshire. Vaughn, good morning. It's good to see you again. But what more can you tell us about this DeSantis campaign shakeup? This is the latest difficult bump for Ron DeSantis' fledgling presidential campaign. He has uh, continued to be seen as the chief rival to Donald Trump, but he continues to be down 20, 30 points in national polling. This latest move, the ousting of the campaign manager, she will stay on the team, but will serve as, a, a, as the chief strategist, uh, is notable because they are elevating the chief of staff from the governor's official Florida office. This uh, individual has been with him for years now and is officially joining the campaign to serve as the campaign manager. They're also bringing on board a new deputy campaign manager, David Polyansky, who had previously been working on Never Back Down, the DeSantis-aligned super PAC. Polyansky is one of the former veterans of the Ted Cruz presidential campaign. He once ran Joni Ernst's uh, Senate bid in 2014 in Iowa. He knows the state well. This shakeup, though, is notable because just two weeks ago, they laid off more than 40 percent of the staff. We are still here in the hardest summer. He hasn't even been to the Iowa State Fair, and yet his campaign has not only had to lay off a significant number of staff, but is now changing uh, the very top of, uh, of their organizational chart here for any company, let alone a campaign. Uh, that is a, a difficult position to be in. But in the exclusive interview that our Dasha Burns had with Ron DeSantis over the weekend, she specifically asked him, about the hiccups that his campaign has faced so far. And in that interview, Ron DeSantis said uh, it would be too many to count the number of times that he had been doubted over the course of his career. And this is the latest episode. He is still very much in this. There's This lady glazed, my man, okay? I know she had some questions that were, like, subtly contentious. But we were covering this interview yesterday, and I will cover it again because I think that I didn't do a decent enough job looking at it, but it honestly was, it, it was shocking. Like when little Rhonda, for example, was saying that, uh, you know, his uh, solution to the border crisis is to just like murk babies or anyone with a satchel at the border, because that means automatically that these are babies that the cartel purchased so they can like cross the border, shit like that, you know, just He said a bunch of unhinged shit. One of the funniest things he, of course, said was that the election was, of course, stolen. I mean, uh, not stolen, sorry. The election was, of course, lost. Donald Trump lost the election in the worst, lamest ways possible. Okay? Those babies knew what they signed up for. Hell yeah, brother. Still tens of millions of dollars between the super PAC and within his campaign operation behind him here. So this is far from over. But for Ron DeSantis, this is a direct acknowledgement that there needed to be a shakeup and a new direction for his presidential campaign. So. Didn't even bring up the Nazi ad. Yeah, that was last. Uh, that was the last news cycle. That's why. So. Um. Yeah, he said military-aged men were renting babies. Uh, so, guys, I have an announcement. I'm quitting Twitch streaming. I'm actually Ron DeSantis' new presidential campaign manager. That's right. So, happy partner anniversary to Hassan. This is the last time you will see me on Twitch.tv 
I have to I have to take over for my man because I'm sick and tired of the top of the hour ad breaks and running them at the top of every hour. Just kidding. I love fucking throwing that segue debate in front of your face because at the top of the hour, there is a three-minute ad break, okay? That's right. I'm a goddamn sellout. And if you no longer want to see those ads, then all you need to do is subscribe, which you can do for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account where you get one free Prime subscription a month. Use it on your favorite sellout broadcaster. Hopefully that's me. Okay. God, I need a haircut so bad. You fucking suck, dude. <laughs> You can also get gifted a sub if you're lucky. Here's the three minute ad break now. Hello, Andrew Filer. Thank you for the 10 gifted subs. Anonymous user, thank you for the 10 gifted subs. Hello. Wait, hold on. Still better than moving to kick? That's true. So, um, let's get back to the full so, Ron DeSantis interview. Uh, most important part of the Ron DeSantis interview, Felix today, uh, Felix appearances today. I just need to figure out when he's coming. Um, let's find the transcript. Let's pull it up. Transcript, transcript, transcript. What was it? What was it like lost? Oh, here. So. Where is it? The election. If the election is a referendum on Joe Biden's policies and the failures that we've seen, and we are presenting a positive vision for the future, we will win the presidency uh, and we will have a chance to turn the country around. If, on the other hand, uh, the election is not about January 20th, 2025, but January 6th, 2021, or what document was left by the toilet at Mar-a-Lago, if it's a referendum on that, we are going to lose. But and that's Trump just the, the reality. Race. So what's funny about this is that he has literally done that. Okay? You've done that, brother. You constantly talk about it. You constantly defend Donald Trump. Race. Do you know with Trump in the race, that is largely what it's going to be about. And right now and you're not, not fighting against not, Joe that's, Biden. That's you're not, fighting against that's Trump. Not a, that's not a pathway for success for the Republican Party. I think a lot of our voters understand that. Uh, look, I, one of the reasons... His face emotes too much. And like in a gross way. Like he's constantly bobbling like a bobblehead. And that shit is so nasty. Like I don't know how to describe it. I just have like a very cringe reaction to any kind of camera opportunity I have. Uh, where I experience Ron DeSantis. I don't like it. Like, ah, ah, that's right. Hello? We need to make sure the election is about the issues and not about Trump's toilet paper. And it's like, like who? Who the fuck? Who's going to look at this and go, damn, that's my charismatic leader right there, dog. When has elections in the United States of America ever been about issues, man? What are you, fucking crazy? You're a Republican. What are you saying? Republicans are like the number one non-issue guys. The entire mechanism for winning elections for Republicans revolves around voter suppression and making non-issues into the most important issue to churn out single issue voters. The culture wars. It's wedge issues. It's stuff that has no real like bearing on your existence unless you are, of course, part of the impacted uh, minority group that is going to uh, receive the, the shitty end of that bargain. Like, yeah, he's literally suing Bud Light because they don't hate trans people. It's so dumb, which, by the way, they do. Like, you are not doing the right thing. Culture wars are supposed to simply be a thing that you say. It's not supposed to be actual legislation. Only the most insane freaks want real 
tangible legislative agenda items that make it illegal for a company to like work with trans people, okay? It's it's all of those like groped up zoomers that he has hired that love putting the Sonnenrad in their campaign ads that want that sort of thing. And they have completely clouded his judgment. The best Republican is one that, you know, does the regular things that he's supposed to do. Deregulation, tax cuts for the wealthy, and corporations. But on issues of culture war, you're just supposed to sometimes do it. Like every now and then. Just give a little tease. Look at Donald Trump. Abortion was a major issue for years and years and years. A major issue, right? Even though 75% of Americans believe that Roe v. Wade was precedent that should remain. What happened? Donald Trump got three Supreme Court picks, and then they turned around and utilized that supermajority to eviscerate abortion protections at the Supreme Court, overturning what they considered to be a super precedent. The fallout from that is clear. It was supposed to be a profoundly successful Republican midterm. And it turned into nothingness because the conversation was on abortion. When Republicans move beyond utilizing culture war issues and actually enact their nefarious agendas, a lot of people start recognizing the cruelty of said agenda and no longer feel as comfortable arguing on behalf of it other than the very freaks that are going out to Planned Parenthoods, the sweaty gremlins that stand outside of Planned Parenthoods to scream at teenagers who are trying to get a pap smear or trying to get uh you know uh, uh some some kind of uh sti test or trying to get an abortion okay those people are insane you cannot win a national election not win a general election with just a a coalition that you've put together with people like that If your entire proposal as a Republican revolves around being cruel to marginalized groups, then you can't actually act out those cruel desires openly. Because the inevitable fallout from experiencing the cruelty that the Republican legislative body is subjecting marginalized groups to is going to cause you uh, cause you to lose elections. It's going to cost the election for you. Ron DeSantis has not seen that for some reason and thinks that what really threw people off about Donald Trump was his uh his rhetoric. And it's actually the exact opposite. What made Trump Trump was his incredible ability to read the room and also his awesome ability to communicate the anger that people in the crowd felt and direct it towards the same vectors of anger that the Republican Party has been developing, the same red herrings like immigrants, gay people, feminists, whatever, for years. And now he's doing the exact opposite. He doesn't have Trump's rhetoric because he can't, because he's not as telegenic as Trump. And he thinks it's actually follow-through that matters. Like, absolutely not. If that was the case, Trump wouldn't be so beloved. He didn't build the wall, which Ron DeSantis and his idiotic ass also brought up. He didn't lock up Hillary Clinton. Right? There were plenty of promises that Trump made in the campaign trail that he didn't follow through on. doesn't matter and they still love him they love him because he is charismatic not charismatic to you and i 
or maybe he is charismatic to you and I because he's charismatic to me. We're charismatic to the average American. Trump did all of those things? What do you mean? Trump's border wall wasn't necessarily a real border wall. It was just like rebuilding certain parts of the wall that already existed. What are you talking about? It's still porous. It doesn't matter. What are you talking about? That wall was already in place. Hillary Clinton is not in jail. That was a major talking point in the campaign. The swamp never got drained. What do you mean? And yet, in spite of all of that, Trump was a very successful Republican president. Like, not Ronald Reagan levels of success, but still up there. Probably almost as successful as Ronald Reagan. Couldn't even repeal Obamacare. So, after all of that, why do people still love him? Why does he still have like 90%, near 90% of support in the Republican Party? which never deviated, by the way, during his presidency when he wasn't fulfilling his promises. Why? Because he played the culture war game perfectly. Amazon piss bottle, thank you for the 10 gifted subs. He owned the libs. Libs couldn't stand him. He made the libs mad. The culture war stuff works well when libs are getting mad. You want to be the cool, charismatic, funny guy who makes jokes about the nerd in the room. You don't want to be the school bully. You don't want to be the playground bully that's actually beating the shit out of like random onlookers. I've said this time and time again. There is an important study. I forget what year it was conducted. I should find it. I, I wonder if I can. Um, there was a study conducted on Democratic and Republican Party voters. And they asked the Republican Party voters about Republican policy positions and whether they believed that that was what the Republican Party was actually trying to do. And the majority of Republicans did not believe that the Republican Party was actually pushing those uh, points of legislation that they actually were. When asked why, they said... Oh, that's far too cruel. That's far too cruel. That's not the case. No shot. Was this it? I don't know if this was it. I can't remember. It might have been a Pew Center one. Republican policy positions, like actual Republican policy prescriptions, are so cruel and so unusual that Republican voters and conservatives across the board don't even believe that that's what they actually stand for. Do you understand? How do you make sense of that? It could have been this one, maybe. Is it? God, it's data for progress. The majority of voters think that the Democrats want to protect uh, the health insurance of those with pre-existing conditions and a plur plurality think Republicans will. Over 70% of all voters know the Democratic Party supports expanding Medicaid. Almost 40% of Republicans think their party supports expanding Medicaid. Over 80% of voters think the Democratic Party supports a $15 minimum wage, which is wrong. They don't. 30% of Republican voters think their party supports a... $15 minimum wage. Also wrong, but even more wrong somehow. Oh my God. A majority of Republicans think their party opposes the elimination of the stream protection rule, uh, which prevented coal companies from dumping mining debris into local streams. Political science uh, scientist E.E. E. Schlatt-Schneider argued that democracy is unthinkable save in terms of the parties. For Schlatt-Schneider, parties solved an information problem that uh, arises with advanced post-industrial society. Put simply, the kinds and quantity of policies that arise are such complexity and scale that no one person could ever hope to know enough to make an informed voting decision. The parties then are 
works. Uh, the parties then are to work as heuristics. With their platforms, they work to simplify the great issues of the day. But this metric by which we are to judge their relative success, they have evidently failed. As for why Republican voters in particular don't see a difference between the two major parties, there are many causes. Motivated reasoning likely plays a large role. If a Republican voter doesn't think mining companies should dump debris into a stream, why would they think their elected representative would support this policy? Another great example of this is uh, amnesty provisions. Another moment of clarity is something that we already experienced. 75% of Americans, which means a tremendous number of Republicans as well, believe in protecting Roe v. Wade. You are supposed to play on a delicate tightrope. And the moment that you fall off that rope, the moment that where you show your hand and the actual cruelty of your legislation is, uh, is, is for all to experience, like criminalizing abortion instantaneously after the Roe v. Wade decision, all of a sudden, everybody recognizes, oh, wait, no, the Republicans aren't actually on board with this. I don't like that. The entire, the entire point of the culture war, the entire point of wedge issues, which are carefully crafted, are to dangle them as a carrot. Never to actually give the carrot to the person. Because when you do that, well, then people realize, oh man, carrots are kind of gross, I guess, in this situation. Okay? You're not supposed to eat the carrot. You're supposed to run towards it. It's a double whammy. Because not only do you lose the carrot that you were using as a way to mobilize your base of support, but now people are living in a world, in a universe, where they recognize the negative consequences of your legislative agenda. But even when they accidentally execute, like in Roe v. Wade, Republicans are so good at misinformation and smoke and mirrors that the voter base doesn't shift. That's not true at all. That's not true at all. Republicans have a really hard battle. That is the reason why currently there is this, is Trump going to be the next candidate or is it Ron DeSantis? Or is this someone else battle happening inside of the Republican Party? But that battle is actually a much larger one. Republicans are victims of their own success. You're not supposed to actually deliver on the horrifying legislative agenda because Republicans get abortions too. Okay? It's exactly like the dog that caught the car. The dog chases the car. But what the fuck's the dog going to do when he actually catches the car? What the dog doing? Most importantly, Republicans have lost a solid base of suburban, upper-middle-class voters. Those people are very important for elections because American elections are not about, like, actually getting the maximum number of people to come out and vote for you. Come on. That's why we have the Electoral College. You have to target people who actually vote. You know who votes? Rich people. People in the suburbs. You cannot create a winning coalition by simply trying to build a reactionary base of support by tapping into single-issue voters that live in, like, rural areas. There's not enough people. There was a thing that I believe Chuck Schumer said a couple years back. Let me see if I can find it. He said something along the lines of, for every blue-collar worker that we lose uh, in a rural area, we gain two suburban voters. And I remember getting so mad at that. I remember getting so mad at that sentiment. 
so gross, so frustrating. It was a sentiment that I thought was completely false as well. I thought it was false at the time because, yeah, you said it was about Pennsylvania and we lost the Trump. That was part of the reason why I thought it was false. And I also uh, think it is objectionable because you should not be losing uh, the, the base of support in the blue-collar, uh, middle-class, uh, uh, you know, you, you should not throw working-class Americans, you should not throw them to the side because you want to win elections. Okay? Now, the unfortunate reality, however, is if you have simply one interest and one interest in mind, and that is to make sure that Democrats win elections, it wasn't wrong. The only moral abortion is my abortion is a well-known phenomenon. Conservatives, especially religious ones, are very comfortable with hypocrisy. We know that they're comfortable with hypocrisy. But, but here's the reality, Mike. When you live in a red area and you, your daughter needs to get an abortion and you're a conservative voter and now she's terrified, or when you are a Republican and uh, you're a Republican voter year over year and all of a sudden you have an ectopic pregnancy and your fucking doctor can't terminate because they're terrified, it don't matter. It don't matter. The hypocrisy goes away. So what you're saying is correct with respect to the only moral abortion is my abortion. As long as it's accessible. And it was never really accessible in red areas, but they didn't care because they were rich enough, clearly. They didn't make a bigger deal about it. Um, they didn't think about the, the uh, trap laws, right? Like, they didn't think about all the red tape that made it so difficult to actually have abortion clinics in, uh, you know, in Republican states. But ultimately, for an ectopic pregnancy or for an abortion, you could always... Find somewhere to go, an abortion clinic that's far away, but yet still an abortion clinic without the fear that you would be punished by the law. Once that shifted, once that shifted and you were directly facing legal repercussions for this medical procedure that is an absolute necessity for your survival in many cases, it's done. Here's the Chuck Schumer quote. Oh, you found it? For every, this is the second point, for every blue-collar Democrat we will lose in Western PA, we will pick up two, three uh, moderate Republicans in the suburbs of Philadelphia. And you can repeat that in Ohio and Illinois. He's not necessarily wrong about this take. He's not wrong. But this take relies on the Republican Party fucking up and actually giving the game away and actually pushing for cruel measures. There is a tremendous amount of harm that the American people now have to experience for this idiotic, uh, uh, this, this idiotic uh, uh, idea to, to come to fruition. Now, of course, it still came to fruition. It's coming to fruition now, but it still doesn't matter. It's disgusting that you're openly and cynically saying it. No, he's wrong because it doesn't fucking work. Well, if it, if it did not work, if it did not work, you would not see it exactly as Kofi is saying uh, in Arizona and Georgia. It's not going to work in Ohio. It's not going to work in Pennsylvania. Well, Pennsylvania might be a little different this time around as well, but it's working in a lot of areas that you did not think it was going to work, specifically red areas or previously red areas. Okay? Do you get it? Speaking of Ohio, I will obviously cover issue one today, which is crazy. Like, such another, such a great example of just, like, the flagrantly anti-democratic nature of the Republican Party, especially. Like, this shows how the Democratic Party operates, okay? In a disgusting manner. They do not care about the lives that they're ruining um, by allowing... It's very mask off by allowing the Republican Party to behave in violent ways because they, in their minds, are making a mental calculation that is better for them. Um, 
for them to win elections without really doing anything. Because if you do something, then all of a sudden you're going against the real people that you care about, your real constituents, your corporate benefactors, right? And it also requires the Republican Party to extend their hand, over leverage themselves, and actually act out on some of their more violent desires. But it's a perfect example of how Ohio and the Ohio Republicans, and just like national Republicans across the board, are so disgusting. Early voting here in Ohio and had only one weekend for early voting and staffing multiple places minimal. Yeah, except in spite of all of those hurdles, which are, of course, a, a, you know, a norm now in American elections, the reality is it seems like early voting has been incredible for Ohio in spite of what you are describing. Brother, I'm sorry. But if this is what you're coming in here as a 41-month subscriber, while we're in the midst of talking about, you know, the Democratic Party, the Republican Party, like, you're, you're so brain-broken, dude. Come on. Like, what do you think? You think I'm going to click on that link? Stop trying to farm drama. Shame on you. So... They last minute changed a bunch of polling places in liberal counties. I mean, they'll try to do whatever they can. <sighs> um, okay. They're trying to stop the abortion measure we have in November. I know Ohio chatters. Shut the fuck up. I know I'm going to get to it. Spoiler alert. Okay. I know what they're trying to do. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about that in a second. There's a lot of complicated stuff going on. I think the main issue is that while the upper middle class going Democrat is helpful for midterms, the biggest growth potential for new voters is among the working class and young. Lots of them don't lots of them don't vote and lean left. I know, but the other side of this, Mike, is that I mean, you can say the Democratic Party has never made a serious attempt to activate these people, but there are people in the Democratic Party who have tried and have failed. Um the real argument here for uh, the Democratic Party's incompetence, in my opinion, is about losing out on the Hispanic vote and losing out on the black vote, okay? These two, well, the Hispanic vote is different, but especially the, the black voter base have been the most reliable voter base for the Democratic Party, historically speaking, post-civil rights movement, Okay. And the reality is that in places like Texas, the Republicans have done a very good job. Texas GOP has done a very good job of uh, just hammering in culture war issues to a Hispanic base of support that allows them to keep maintaining the majorities they need in places like that when we know that in spite of the Hispanic vote not being a, a solid voter block in a similar way as the African-American voter block is, right? Because of geographic location differences and, and the fact that like it's uh, born out of migration and, and, and it completely depends on which region uh, someone is coming from and what kind of prior political opinions they have. The Hispanic voter block has certain concepts, like the Latino voting block has certain concepts that they are infinitely more favorable towards regardless of the demographics, the age demographics. And I am, of course, talking about socially progressive, or not socially progressive, sorry, fiscally progressive economic policies. There is no other voter bloc in the United States of America that openly says, even with the most massaged, the most disingenuous talking point, they say they want bigger government. Okay? The Latino voting bloc loves big government, wants bigger government. They want bigger government. They hate all the, you know, abortion, gay stuff. They don't like all that because they're, you know, hardline Catholics. So the Texas GOP relies on the Democratic Party's incompetence or rather lack of care on actually communicating any kind of, uh, you know, any kind of uh, strong government initiative and hammers on the Catholicism angle like crazy. 
And it's been very successful. Not all Latinos want bigger government and the Democratic Party already wins about 65% of them. Yeah, keep being comfortable thinking that you will continue getting those numbers with the Latino vote as those numbers have actually in prior years, and this is a very important part of this conversation that people are forgetting. In previous years, the Latino voter bloc and the black voter bloc would certainly hemorrhage uh, in support of the Democratic Party. It was going down, right? There was a there was a trend line that is like definitely going down. Okay? But something really scary for the Democratic Party's future prospects has been happening. And it's not that black people are no longer choosing to vote and they're just like saying, I'm not voting, fuck this shit. Some black voters are actually voting for the Republican Party. That is new, okay? That is new. Because the Republican Party relies on racial agitation as a way to galvanize its white voter base. Do you understand? That is a dramatic shift that spells trouble for the Democratic Party. Think about it. The Republican Party's attitude towards black voters has historically been, let's do everything we can to stop them from voting. Both parties raise bait, what do you mean? Yes, they certainly do. But in the opposing directions... Silly chatter. Yes, the Democratic Party says, oh, Black Lives Matter. I'm going to wear the kente cloth. Please, I love you. Please, black people, vote for me. Keep voting for me. And then they don't do shit when it comes down to, like, genuinely improving the material conditions of black voters or black people in general in the United States of America. The Republican Party does the exact opposite, where they're like, they're all thugs. They're all welfare queens. They're all criminals. They're angry all the time. They're violent all the time. They're coming into your suburbs and they're going to fuck your wife. They're both doing some kind of, uh, you know, racial communication. It's just in the exact opposite direction. If you look at that situation and you go, well, this is exactly the same. I don't know what to tell you. I feel like the younger voter block is honestly just waiting for Democrats to do anything whatsoever. I see a lot of my friends just have the attitude. It doesn't matter. Nothing will happen. All they need to do is like say, fuck it, cancel student debt, and it would bring out young voters. Absolutely. Another poll that the New York Times conducted was, uh, it showed that it was like a 43 to 43 uh, deadlock between Donald Trump and Joe Biden if they were to become the candidates. Obviously, Joe Biden is, and it seems like Donald Trump will be as well. And there was a... There was a base of young voters, primarily uh, young voters of color, okay, that were that would make up the 14% or 17%, if I'm not mistaken. I don't want to get the numbers wrong. That literally were just like, ah, I voted for Joe Biden. Don't really feel like it anymore. I don't know what's going on. I don't care enough. It seems like these guys aren't really doing much. In, and if that uh, undecided but completely aware of both candidates. This is a very important distinction because in a lot of instances, undecided voters are, are maybe finding out about the candidates for the first time. This is not that situation because the election already happened in 2020. If the people are the same people, then you would expect in normal circumstances for the undecided voters to vote in the same exact way that they voted in the last election, in the last general election. Those undecided voters can be activated. Student loan debt relief would be a major factor in their consideration. When you say, it definitely makes me feel sick thinking I have to vote for Joe Biden again, my friend, you are not alone. In our demographics, in the age group that watches me on Twitch, there are a lot of people that feel exactly like you do. And that is an understandable feeling to have. I really think that Matt Chrisman is on to something when he says that people don't think of politics is actually able to make people's lives better, just a way of punishing or controlling people they don't like. Yeah, I don't think that's wrong. I think it's a very cynical way to look at it, but I think that that cynicism exists in the heart of every American because at this point, you know that they're not going to do anything. 
You know that like neither party is really going to get anything across except for like the actually incredibly cruel legislation that the Republican Party sometimes accidentally pushes for, pushes a little too hard on. So yeah, if you have nothing, if you know damn well through all of your experiences as a, as a new voter that voted maybe one election cycle, two election cycles, you already recognize, yeah, the Democratic Party didn't do shit for me. What the fuck should I vote? Or if you're still a voter, if you're still like a diehard Democrat voter, you're like, well, Democratic Party's not doing all the things that I want and, and none of the things that they're promising. So maybe, maybe they'll just like piss off the Republicans, which is inherently a reactionary way to vote, spite driven voting. That is the entire purpose. That is the entire reason why Republicans vote. And now Democrats are also gearing up for that as well. Because all matter of electoral politics in America are run on wedge issues now. I mean, think about it. Donald Trump is running to the left of the institutional Republican Party representative, Ron DeSantis. He is cutting ads that primarily communicate that Ron DeSantis wants to cut Medicare. Ron DeSantis wants to cut entitlements. Are you kidding me? That is unheard of. That is actual policy that the Republican Party has worked so hard to, to secretly enact. Like, I've spent so much time in Vienna. They have massive burn control. 70% of the people live in social public housing. Public transit is everywhere. Fuck the largest housing building. is literally called Karl Marx Hof. And it's rated the most livable city in the world for decades. And Americans think all of what I just said is impossible. I know. I was just talking. I was talking to a normie earlier today, as a matter of fact, on this precise same issue. People in the American political uh, discourse, uh, uh, like media apparatus, rarely ever recognize the existence of Europe and European cities. Because they think like, National health care. What? That's crazy. It's like, well, how do they do it? That could never happen. Social housing. Oh, what do, what do you mean? That would never work. It's a how are, they're, they're doing it. They're doing it. It's not like it doesn't work. It's not like it's, a, it's, it's magic. Europe is not a magic place. They never consider it. Like, even if your goal is not immediately, you know, permanent... Uh, permanent first world genocide now you know even if you're not like a jd pong guy okay and you're running around being like i want to take over american military bases and and uh, you know destroy the the imperial core from within or whatever the fuck okay even if you're you're thinking like well through reforms you can at least like greatly improve the conditions for the american labor movement to thrive and also um uh, you know, create an opportunity, create an environment where uh, at least there are some social amenities that uh, all Americans can enjoy to a certain degree that will genuinely improve the living conditions of, of every single person, okay? Even if that's your argument, they go, ah, oh, you're a socialist, communist, piece of shit, fuck you. Damn, this guy's good.